Hey everybody, today I'm going to address a very controversial topic. I've been meaning to do it for a long time and my hands kind of been forced into it. And this is the discussion that I hear so often about using full frame lenses on crop sensor bodies. I get an email, it seems like every other day, asking me why I would use a full frame lens on a crop sensor body in my epic shootouts because it makes the image softer. So before we get into the discussion, the question that I ask anybody before I get into a lens sharpness discussion is I ask them to explain to me how to read an MTF chart. The reason I do this is because it is the industry standard to describe the sharpness of a lens in terms of its micro contrast and its resolving power. When I say resolving power, I'm, I'm talking about that second line, which really demonstrates, it's supposed to demonstrate how fine of detail a lens can transfer an image onto a recording media. So you're going to hear me talking about MTF charts a lot, but the reason is that is kind of like the threshold of understanding that I like to get into. And the reason is the MTF chart answers many of these questions already. It's used by camera companies, lens companies. It, it, it's pretty much well accepted in most Pro photographers can describe how to read an MTF chart. If you can't, I've made a video recently that explains it. Okay, so if you can't read an MTF chart, don't watch this video. You're not going to like it. Okay, educate yourself a little bit in terms of how to read an MTF chart for everybody's benefit, and then come back and watch the rest. So, having said that, the second line is the resolving power of a lens. And if it's above like 0.8, 80%, it's considered excellent. If it's below 6 or 60%, it's considered not that great. So why is the resolving power of a lens important in this discussion? Well, MTF charts are known. How we get those results are known. People can describe and people can reproduce those tests. Whereas much of this information about the resolving power of a lens being less sharp on a crop body is coming from one source that I do not subscribe to, and that is DxO Mark. Explaining DxO Mark is a nightmare because they don't publish their methodology. That is a problem for me. I was a grad student at the University of Alabama working on a PhD for eight years in genetics. So I have read many scientific papers. I've done many studies in terms of the grad students and how we were trained at the school. If you don't have your methodology, it's the same as if the data didn't even exist. That's how serious it is. And when I see scientists running a company like DxO Mark and they are intentionally leaving that data out, huge red flags all over the place. And their data may be correct. But the question I ask to the people who support the perceived megapixel score is simple. Explain to me how they're coming up with that number. Nobody can do it. There is not a single person who can tell me how that score is calculated, how to reproduce it. And so when I do my tests in the epic shootouts and things of that nature, I'm always very careful to include at least links or videos or descriptions in terms of how the test was done so I can be scrutinized. So another part of the problem is sometimes it's very difficult in YouTube to say something or describe something. And if you use imprecise language, that can be misinterpreted a hundred different ways. And that sometimes happens unintentionally. So, and I think that's the case here is that uh, different YouTubers are saying things and they have good intentions and they're mostly accurate when you really listen to them, but how it's received is something that's completely different. So the question then becomes, is there any truth to a lens losing its sharpness when it's put onto a smaller format camera. That is just, there, there is some truth to it, but we have to look at sources that are not related to DxO Mark. And once I explain this, I think you guys will understand it a lot better. So a lens's properties do not change no matter what format you put them on. It's always going to have the same resolving power and the same uh, micro contrast the difference is in the sensor of the camera that's being used. And I personally do not consider myself to be a lens expert. I know a lot about lenses, but I am not, uh, you know, the top cutting edge 
information expert on lenses. I consider somebody who uses lenses or tests lenses every single day to be an expert. And the only lens expert that I've had access to who answers my questions and I've had discussions with on these topics is Roger Sikala over at lensrentals.com. So Roger is super knowledgeable. He publishes a blog that has tremendous information about lens sharpness. And in one of the articles that I'll include in the description, he talks about the conflict between the resolving power of a lens, which is a known thing with MTF charts, versus the resolution of a sensor. So as the pixel pitch becomes smaller and smaller, the resolving power of a lens is challenged further and further. And when it gets to a point that it can no longer resolve very, very fine detail at that point, yeah, you can expect to see a loss of sharpness. But this has to do with resolving power of a lens versus the sensor construction. And there's some other things involved in a sensor design that can affect the sharpness. One of the cameras we hear so often about is the Canon 7D. It is an APS-C camera. And I've owned two of them. And you know what? The images just aren't that sharp sometimes. But if you look at the construction of the 7D, it had a filter put on there to help clean the sensor. It was one of the earlier versions of this sensor cleaning filter that would vibrate and kick dust off the sensor. And it's quite possible that that extra layer affected the sharpness of the camera. So when we're talking about how an image is produced in terms of sharpness, there are many variables beyond the lens. You're looking at the construction of the sensor. It may have an optical low pass filter or not. It could be an x sensor like we see in Fuji. Then there's the interpolation and the processing. There's noise reduction. There's all kinds of things that go into the processing of a sharp image. And those variables make it very difficult to pin down how a lens would behave on a specific camera body. That's what's very ambitious about DxO Mark is they're trying to come up with something that would say, hey, this lens on this camera body, you know, this is what you can expect. Super ambitious, but we need to know how they're coming up with the numbers. So another problem with a lens sharpness is that lenses are not identical. Because we're dealing with glass, there's inconsistencies in the construction of the lenses. And so you may have two lens copies that are very different performing than one another. In fact, you can have a lens that performs differently from place to place in the lens. Now, something I appreciate about Roger is that when he tests lenses, he'll take 10 copies and he'll rotate them 90 degrees to get an average. And he publishes those MTF charts. And so we understand where that information is coming from. Another resource that we can use is Canon. When the 5DS and the 5DSR were announced, they published a list of lenses where they're saying these lenses play nice on these high resolution sensors. And so that was a very important piece of information is because Canon's saying even full frame lenses on full frame format cameras can run into this resolving power issue. These are the lenses that we would want you to use. There are some other very important points about this discussion. For example, the format that you're publishing in. Is this a 1080p video? Is it 4K? Is it a poster for a movie? Pixels don't really have a size until you publish it to your print or the media that you're using. And so if you know, you're know you going for a billboard, yeah, this is going to matter. If you're going for a video on YouTube that's going to be compressed anyway, eh, probably not going to matter as much. There's also Many other details about a lens that are important, like the focusing accuracy. If a camera misses focus, the sharpness matter. And there are, you know, vignetting, distortion, chromatic aberration. There's all these other things about lenses. So in regards to this discussion about full frame cameras on crop sensor bodies, my personal advice is if you are using a lens that is not sharp enough, stop it down. Don't shoot wide open. There's a tendency to want to shoot at 2.8. But if you stop a lens down, it becomes sharper and sharper. And Roger has even published this in regards to the D810. Hey, these lenses, when you stop them down, they're going to be sharp enough. They're going to be have enough resolving power. If you look at the MTF charts that Canon publishes, they include a second set of lines that show how the resolving power increases when you're shooting at f8. 
And so I always tell my students, use the best lens that you have for the job. If it's not sharp enough, stop it down, consider your output media, and if it's still not enough, then would be the time to upgrade. But for the most part, no, uh, it's, it's more about resolving power in relationship to the sensor being used. Now, some of you are not going to believe me in some of this advice that I'm giving you. My advice to you would be to get a full frame camera that has a crop mode on it. Something like a Sony full frame, some of the Nikons will do it. Put a full frame lens on there, take a picture in full frame mode, flip it over to the crop mode and take another picture and then compare the image from the crop to the full frame and just inspect it. See if anything has changed or if anything's different. And this is why I have more respect for the guy on YouTube going out doing his own tests and he's showing and publishing is because these are tests that he can recreate. So that is kind of my position on full frame lenses on crop sensor bodies. I know many of you will not like it, but I had to take a position because so many people were attacking me over using full frame lenses on crop bodies for my epic shootout. So I know there's a chance I've ruffled some feathers. I'm not interested in who's right. I'm, I'm interested in, in what is right, kind of setting the record straight. If you guys have comments or suggestions, whether you like this video or not, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. If you found this video helpful, you might be interested in one of my many courses on DSLRs as well as advanced techniques. They're available worldwide by download and they come with a 100% money back guarantee. You can order them from the following link.